Okay, in this video, we are going to look into building an ignition coil tester, which you can see mounted on this piece of aluminum. Now, if you're into small engine repair and you're involved with gas powered engines like motorcycles, boats, cars, tractors, farm machineries, any one of these engines, you're going to find a coil in the ignition system used to spark the spark plug to ignite the fuel air mixture in the combustion chamber. So we could have need a way to test the coil, so I built this little circuit. So you can see there's a breadboard with a 555 timer, and that's a pulse generator, which is feeding this HEI module. It's a high energy ignition module. Now this is out of a small block Chevy in the years 1974 to about 1988, and this was mounted inside the distributor, so I'm using that. So the output of my pulse train generator is fed into the input, that's the trigger inputs here, and the outputs here are fed into the coil which drive the coil. And it's powered by 12 volts, here's my power input and here's my output to the coil and this is my pulse generator. So I have a little pot on, on, the, on the breadboard that will adjust the, the rate, the pulse rate output that's feeding the input to the HEI module. So we could simulate RPM from 600 to 6000 uh, into the HEI module which will cause a spark in our spark plug. So we could hook up a, a spark plug to our coil and we could run this uh, circuit and we could watch the spark plug uh, being energized by the HEI module. Now for testing, when you first build this circuit, you could build it on the breadboard like I did here. There's your 555 timer and then I feed that into the HEI module and instead of using a coil, I hook it across a light bulb and we could see the, the, the pulsating actions uh, on the light bulb of how it's driving the HEI module. Okay, I have my tester powered up and instead of driving a coil, I have it connected across a light bulb. And you can see it pulsating there. So it's set for 600 RPM. That's the lowest pulse rate. So if I increase the pulse rate, you can see it pulsating faster. And it'll get brighter. And we can take it all the way up to 6000 RPM. Right there. And I'll take it back down. So this is just a way we could check out our circuit that it's working before we actually hook it up to an ignition uh, coil. Okay, here's the ignition coil that I want to test. Now coils come in all shapes and sizes, but they have a similarity that they have three terminals. Now these two terminals here is your primary winding, and then we have the output, which are high voltage, that's our secondary winding. So uh, one of them is usually marked plus, so I put my red wire onto the plus and black wire onto the other terminal. And then we could power it up with 12 volts. Now we need a power supply that can handle about 10 amps, or, or a battery that could output about 10 amps. Now we could use a spark gap on the end of the of the high voltage cable or a spark plug but what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put it close by the ground which is the aluminum plate now when I power it up you'll see a spark jump you see a spark jumping, now if I take a screwdriver and adjust the frequency let's see it gets, there's our, there's our 6000 and I'll take it back down to 600 Okay, here's a typical schematic of a three terminal ignition coil. So basically it's a transformer. So we have a primary winding and we have a secondary winding. Now the primary winding is usually very low resistance comparison to the secondary winding which has a lot more turns. One side of the primary winding is labeled plus and that's where we hook up our power supply. Now the output, the high voltage output of the secondary feeds our spark plug which gives us our spark. So in the circuit we feed 12 volts to the primary winding and we energize it so it creates a magnetic field and we let it build up to maximum and that's our dwell time then we de-energize the primary and the magnetic field will collapse and we'll get a high voltage spike on our secondary now to energize the primary we have a switch to ground you can see here now in points and condenser type distributor that's actually a switch a mechanical switch but in our case we're using an HDI module so it's done electronically Okay, here's the inside of an HEI module pulled out of a small block Chevy. And I've worked on a lot of small block Chevys in my time. And if you memorize part numbers, GM part numbers, we call this a 990. You can see it here. That's the last three digits of the part number. So this is the rotor that turns around. And this is the module here that gives our spark to our coil. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my ignition coil tester. 
and the heart of the circuit is an HEI module, and the GM part number is 1875990. Now it's powered by 12 volts, and you feed the 12 volts to the B terminal, stands for battery, and ground is this eyelet here. So this is actually a terminal, so you ground that, and you put a bolt through there, and you bolt it down to the aluminum plate, which actually is a heat sink. So you have to put thermal compound, thermal grease, on the back of the module. Now the B terminal also feeds the plus of the coil, and the C terminal is the other side of the coil. So C stands for coil. So this is our, our power supply, 12 volts, and we're powering our oscillator. Now our oscillator could be a 555 timer, it could be a CMOS inverter oscillator, it could be a microcontroller, whatever you want. So the output is set for 5 to 50 hertz, which will give us 600 to 6000 RPM. And this is our input, our trigger input, so G and W, uh, that stands for the, the colors of the wires in the HEI module for green and white. So the G terminal is the input, our pulse train input, and the W is ground, it's common ground. So that's our circuit there. So you could use whatever oscillator you want and then adjust it with the pot to give a 5 to 50 hertz output to drive the coil. Okay, here's a block diagram of the HEI module. And you can see the trigger inputs labeled W and G. So W is a common ground. G is our pulse train input. So our 5 volt pulse train from our oscillator. And that's fed into the HEI module, the signal converter. And that's feeding an NPN transistor, which is acting as a switch. So we have battery connected to the B terminal. And the battery feeds one side of the coil, the primary. And it goes through the primary coil. And then it goes through the collector. And then it gets grounded through the NPN transistor, which energizes the primary until the maximum uh, magnetic field, the dwell time, and then the transistor shuts off and we get a spark. You can see a resistor in here. This is current limited to about 5.5 amps. So if we have a shorted coil, it won't destroy the HEI module. So this is our electronic switch that is pulsating the ignition coil to give us our spark. Okay, so that was my little tutorial on how to build your own ignition coil tester. Now we could go further. If you have an engine and you want to upgrade it to electronic ignition, you could use one of these HEI modules. All you need is the trigger input and you can get that from a crankshaft position sensor and you can hook it up to your, to your engine and trigger it off the crankshaft and that will give you your spark. And I could also simulate a gear on a crankshaft each time the tooth goes by it will toggle the LED. Now this HEI module does not have advanced retard capabilities of the spark. That's done in the distributor with a mechanical advance and a vacuum advance. So what I use, I use a microcontroller. I feed the trigger input into a microcontroller. It senses the frequency and I can make my own advance curve. So that's what I'm doing here. I have a little development board and I'm using RP2040 microcontroller to take this trigger signal and give me a proper advance to meet the spec of the engine. So that's my little project. So if you want to build your own ignition coil tester, this is how we do it. And I will save a lot of time in troubleshooting small engines.